everybody. I just want to take some time away from the technical throw aspects and talk about something uh, that comes up quite a bit. Question came in about this. It's a Q&A topic I've been wanting to cover for a while, put a lot of thought into, uh, and that is kettlebell training for throwers, or really could be any athletes, but more specifically for Highland Games throwers, uh, kind of what, when, and how. I'm just going to give you quick overviews and my background just to kind of cover that and kind of my disclaimer bias, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I have now, oh, a total of 20 years of kettlebell training experience and uh, almost 10 years of that, first 10 years, minimally coach kind of online stuff, working with a couple PTs that were kind of in the know in the RKC system, if you're familiar with that. Uh, and then that was um, Pavel's um, growth into the uh, Strong Force organization, which I've been a part of since 2014, and basically um, done a, spent a lot of time in the kettlebell world, just as my kind of um, disclaimer and also potentially my bias um, as well, uh, and, and worked with lots of different athletes, been to lots of certifications, earned my elite status, so, um, you know, been around the kettlebell game a decent amount of time, um, where I feel like I can speak to that um, as, as a tool and as a thrower, 20 years of experience as a thrower. So basically my inception into the Highland Games was also my inception into uh, kettlebell training. And I've always been a barbell enthusiast as well. My first love of the iron was barbells, dumbbells. I've always liked unconventional stuff, um, but just wanted to kind of add that as my, as my base in case people don't know my background. And I've, I've spent some time in the Olympic lifts, working with different coaches, competing uh, lightly as a, a sub-masters level uh, competitor in the full Olympics lifts. So having some experience throughout that range is, I think, uh, really valuable. And having battle-tested these these programs, protocols, and all that. So kind of number, number one piece, which is hopefully pretty obvious, is you got to use the tool well, first of all. Whatever level thrower you are, you got to use the tool well. And there's a whole array of different styles of kettlebell, or really just two main main camps. And then you have kind of this flub hybrid stuff that just gets a little convoluted. So uh, again, I'm coming from this more hard style, power development, crisp, clean technique. Some would say overly um, attention to detail and in this hard style just like it sounds versus sports style much more about getting the repetitions efficiency of motion rather than expressing that pure um, power and you know what i would would argue would be more of the athletic development on the the side of the the strong first side of things so with that hopefully that gives some people some foundation but you got to use the tool well so you got to know let's say we're doing just a, a kettlebell squat or even a turkish get up you can't just have this sloppy we call it a get her done style um get up or a squat that just looks like garbage just like with a barbell you're gonna get hurt you're gonna have lackluster results um you know secondly you got to use appropriate loads you can't which rarely happens i think um going to heavy double kettlebells you'll soon see it's not the same as a barbell you got to go lighter than that so that's important um of course as well it's very um easy to, to sometimes underload new, newer, um, newer throwers, newer people um, may not have access to one or two kettlebells. Um, that's another topic in itself, um, whether one kettlebell is superior to two, depending on the movement. Um, and I'll get into that a little bit later, answer that maybe another time if um, we don't wanna make this too long and too uh, highly in-depth of a video. Um, but we got to use the tool well. We got to load it appropriately. We got to have the sets and reps in there too. So to answer that the question more specifically, the value is highest for let's say a total newbie, especially maybe an aging athlete or even a young young athlete. Really, just somebody coming into the Highland Games. Great tool, especially if they don't have access or don't want to get into barbell lifting. Maybe they're coming into the in season. Awesome tool there uh, to not get hurt. To just have this implement moving around the body in a little more unorthodox way where the barbell just doesn't feel the same. You look at a weight for distance. I've shown this in some of my articles and things that I talk about. Uh, it's just kind of a no brainer, the weight for distance and the weight of a bar, let's say. It's a weight cannonball with a handle. So very similar in that way. Um, doesn't make it superior just because of that, but it just, just feels good to be able to swing that bell, project that force 
um, we like to say same but different. Same basic principles always, but the different application, different timing of that. So I wouldn't go and just swing kettlebells and expect to do well on weight over bar. You know, hopefully that um, is obvious to people. Uh, and, you know, someone who's also highly advanced and, and or in season, someone with a good barbell base. Um, Dan John talks a lot about this. Dan John, if you don't know him, he uh, comes from a kettlebell background and also high level Olympic lifting, Highland Games, strength coaching. You know, he's been around the world, been around for 40 some years now. Uh, walk the walk, talk the talk, big influence of mine. So I'll give credit where credit's due. But um, Dan would say this as well, and I definitely agree. It's a nice tool, especially like for me as I was transitioning right now, um, just peaking for my next competition here. I like to switch gears into kettlebells. It's just a lot harder to overload. It's friendlier to my body, allows for more, a little more individualization. I just um, had this more self-correcting, self-limiting. Again, say squats, or I was doing a, a double snatches into you know this, and, and this is a tall, very applicable position to weight over bar, and actually splicing that in with some weight over bar throws, and then I'm dropping down into a quick power squat. So I'm dropping those bells, ballistic drop, boom, right into that. And it's nice to go through multiple reps. It's a very efficient tool. Again, that crosses all sectors there, but uh, maybe somewhere where it's least effective would be somebody who hasn't built that base of strength, who has access to barbells, all that stuff. Is it superior in that case, somebody let's say with a year or two of throwing, um, maybe even my wife, for example, uh, Kelly does not have as big of a base, say on her squat and some of her Barbell, if we're if we're talking bench, squat, and dead as our main uh, strength tools, and then the Olympic lifts. She has very little experience with Olympic lifts. Um, yes, she's a master's level athlete. So, is the juice worth the squeeze potentially? Um, and, and yes, I think it is for her with other variations like high poles, and we can do some different jump shrug with a trap bar, some hybrid type of movements that aren't just kettlebells, um, so we can get some heavier loading. Uh, she does have about a three times body weight deadlift, for example. So she's already very strong. So, you know, the kettlebell can feed into her, her you know, in some ways maybe she's not the best example, but someone who does not have, I mean, we could throw around a bunch of numbers, but I like, you know, for men, minimum standard of like a, a, a 1.5 times body weight front squat would be a really good, um, reasonable number to attain. Um, same kind of thing for bench press, um, well over body weight in a front squat and bench press for just using barbell an example or, or a two times body weight uh, back squat if we want to go into a back squat, for example. Um, but again, last piece maybe to cover on this, if you do not have a lot of interest, coaching, um, background in, um, in barbells already, it's probably not, and, and you're already spending your time and you have a life and you know, imagine all this stuff, it's probably better to spend your time with kettlebells. I'm a big fan of sandbags as well. Simple tools that you're not gonna get hurt on. You don't need a ton of technical skill. You can spend your time and energy technical skills, especially pre-season, in-season, which seasons can last a long time nowadays at Highland Games. People are spending you know, six months um, competing, you know, in the competition season and, and doing uh, throws and lifts, especially a master's level athlete with average recovery. Uh, you, you're not going to be able to put in more than three condensed um, barbell or, or any kind of training sessions in the gym and or three sessions outside. So like six to eight hours of moderate, you know, skill-based training explosive training, you know, that kind of stuff per week is about the top end of, of what I've found. Time and energy recovery, you know, I have to be able to uh, recharge my battery in a sense or, you know, any athletes I work with that have normal recovery situation, you know, that aren't in the early tw 20s, sleeping lots, you know, have, have other, you know, uh, tools for recovery, that kind of thing that are enhanced from, you know, sauna, ice bath, all that helps, but it just adds that one, 2% per tool. And in, in my experience, uh, you know, you're not going to see a 50% increase in recovery from taking a sauna, even if you do it seven days a week, that kind of thing. So anyways, hope that helps. Again, recap, this is a, a foundation of kettlebells using the tool well. Uh, and it's not, an, it doesn't have to be an either or, uh, for me, it's definitely an and. I like both, it's enough um, specialized variety in that way. 
uh, especially before competitions, I like to work towards lighter implements, get out of my head. The barbell just doesn't feel as, as fluid to my body, as nice to my body as a kettlebell. Again, say a snatch, for example, perfect example, one, sometimes two bells, but that single arm movement, that unilateral movement just lends itself much more to throwing. Um, so I hope that gives people uh, a little more clarity in the kind of compartments of how to potentially use a kettlebell. Go from there. Love to hear more questions. Happy to answer questions. We're going to do this on a regular basis. Uh, plan it to like once a week and some of it sit down, some of it's technical stuff. So keep those questions coming. Appreciate it. Comment below, um, help subscribe, promote this channel. I uh, appreciate it all. Thanks guys.